Oh, don't misunderstand. We're celibate. I don't think I know that word. Before we start, I thought I need to tell people I have removed some of the original video because the person in the video, video just kept talking on and on and on, did not actually say anything. So I'm going to put a blip showing where I have removed some of that video. I've been doing that for a while, but um, apparently some people complained that I was editing video of other people and not telling anyone that I was doing that. They thought it was dishonest. I thought it was fucking obvious. When that blip sounds, that means I have removed some of the video from the original video that I'm replying to. So, the pwnage will begin shortly. I have to get ready. Okay, we are ready. Hello, my name is Mark Stump. Welcome to What Would the Age of Enlightenment Do? Now, I'll summarize those ten minutes. One, theory ought to lead to predictions, and predictions ought to be compared to observation. If the predictions don't match observation, the theory is wrong. Okay, problem number one. There's no theory out there that says the moon is made out of cheese. <sighs> How about you look up what the word theory means. Mm -hmm. In science, there are generally one or at most two theories that describe any particular observed phenomena. Generally, there is only one theory. On very rare occasions, there will be two theories that describe a phenomena out there. The moon being made out of green cheese is not a theory. Nobody out there says the moon is made out of green cheese, yellow cheese, white cheese, or gray cheese. No kind of cheese. Um, if you want to argue a point in science, your analogy has to be based in reality and in science. Kind of thought this was bloody obvious. You know, the, the topic of this video. What would you be hearing if there were one specific global warming theory? No, there is no such thing as global warming theory. The word you're searching for is called physics. That's physics. Specifically, chemistry and heat transfer. There is no such thing as global warming theory, let alone more than one global warming theory. <sighs> that held up well to observation. And what is wrong with what you have been hearing? It's pretty simple. If there were a specific known relationship, uh, you should be able to see it expressed in a formula. Yes, and regarding human-caused climate change, and specifically human-caused warming of planet Earth, we have that uh, equation, and we've had it for 120-something years. Okay, next. And it should make predictions about the future average temperature. Yes, you mean projection or project, not predict. By the way, the human-caused climate change and the human-caused warming equation, well over 120 years old, has been successfully doing that. Which turn out uh, correct time after time after time. It's been doing so. Now, of course, uh, we can allow for other factors like the sun. Uh, and. Solar variation has absolutely nothing at all to do with the current global temperature anomaly. And say, here's the relationship between CO2 and average global temperature. John Tyndale did that when Abraham Lincoln was still alive. 
And here's how we can measure and adjust for the sun's output. Not applicable. And here's the formula for that. This is the equation showing the absorption of infrared radiation by atmospheric carbon dioxide in three major bands. We have known this equation for over 120 years. Here is the equation for infrared radiation absorption by atmospheric water vapor. Note that when the carbon dioxide volume increases in Earth's atmosphere, water vapor also increases. This equation sums all of the greenhouse gas infrared radiation absorption effects of all greenhouse gases in Earth's atmosphere and renders it into one value. Finally, this equation shows the global average temperature in absolute value for changing atmospheric greenhouse gases. If you change carbon dioxide from 280 parts per million by volume to 400 parts per million by, by volume, the global average temperature will increase. This equation has been known since the 1910s. If you want to project the global average temperature into the future based on changing carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, this is the equation that you will want to use. This equation is so well known that it even shows up on train station walls. So, so whoever wants to make that prediction about the the average temperature over the next decade or whatever. The next decade? No! I could say, here's my prediction, but my prediction includes this adjustment for whatever we measure the sun's output to be. Solar radiation variability is irrelevant. No. Or, or here, anyway. That's not what you hear, though. As far as I know, that's not what you're hearing. That's not what I keep seeing in the media and from politicians. In, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm all choked up. In the media and from politicians, you, you're not hearing the, the science, the physics involved in global average temperature change that geophysicists and a hell of a lot of other physicists uh, work with and on on a daily basis. You're not hearing that from the media and politicians. Do you see a problem here with trying to get your science from the media and politicians? Mostly what you hear from politicians and the media is that there is a consensus and who are you to question it? There is a consensus among the scientists, among the media and politicians, no. Now, the consensus argument and that appeal to authority. Therefore, Earth might be flat. If you are claiming that all of the scientists happen to agree on a subject, which by the way they do, if you increase atmospheric carbon dioxide, you will increase global average temperature. That is exactly what we have observed, by the way. All of the scientists out there agree that has happened and will happen and will continue to happen. That you are calling argument by authority. Since all of the scientists out there agree Earth is not flat, that too, according to you and your odd beliefs, is argument by authority. Since we all know that argument by authority is a logical fallacy, Earth might be flat. This is what you are arguing. Do you see any problem with that? Are not proper parts of the scientific method. You're not going to hear Richard, the great Richard Feynman saying, oh, you know, we've got this consensus thing or we've got this authority thing. No. Scientific consensus is the goal of science and scientists. Once the evidence overwhelmingly shows something is true, all of the scientists say, okay, by golly, we agree. Tentatively, we all agree, Earth is not flat. We tentatively all agree, Earth is an oblate spheroid. That is scientific consensus. It is not argument by authority. 
By the way, you are citing, or pretending to cite, the great Richard Feynman. Did you know that Richard Feynman was part of the original Jason's project mandated by the United States Executive Office to not only uh, work on and oppose and um, think up clever ways to survive nuclear war, he was also a part of the project to think of ways and to mitigate against and even avoid, if possible, human-caused climate change due to increased carbon dioxide. That was just one project that the Jasons worked on. There's a couple books about the Jasons and specifically Richard Feynman's work with the Jasons uh, reporting to the executive office and the United States president at the time. You are citing somebody in a video who that somebody accepted the scientific consensus that increasing carbon dioxide in Earth's atmosphere will increase and was increasing Earth's global average temperature. You are pretending to cite somebody who agreed with that to support your position that this is all just argument by authority. <sighs> Once again, do you see a problem with that? Just the opposite. Um, so, so consensus and authority are important in politics. Scientific consensus is the goal of science and scientists. No one gives a shit what the consensus among politicians are because it never happens. Uh, politicians may confuse consensus with correctness. Uh, they are certainly all about authority. But these are not proper elements of the scientific method. Consensus is. So, I'm pretty much done, but before I go, I'm not going to tell you what the average global temperature will be in 10, 20, 50, or 100 years. You can't do it. I can. Scientists have been doing so for a long time. Scientists have been doing so with extremely good accuracy for a long time. Tell us the atmospheric composition of Earth in 10, 20, 50 years. We will tell you what the global average temperature will be at that time period with extremely tiny error bars. We have the math. We have the physics. We know all we need to know to do this projection correctly, accurately, and we have been doing that. We as in uh, geophysicists, chemists, uh, physics in general, have been doing this for a very long time. We know all we need to know to project global average temperature into the future, provided one, and in your case, one, variable, you tell us what it is, and we will give you a global average temperature. Tell us how much carbon dioxide will be in the atmosphere for any time in the future, and we will tell you what the global average temperature will be. I think it's apparent that no one can. I think it's apparent you're a moron. Maybe somewhere in the range of predictions is a non-spectacular prediction that is consistent with the future. Non-spectacular, huh? But until you see a specific theory make successful predictions, what you should be hearing from politicians and the media... Politicians and the media again! Politicians and the media! So, ignore what the scientists are saying. They all agree on it, so ignore them, because that's argument by authority. You expect politicians and the media to all agree because, by God, everybody knows that if something is true, all of the politicians and all of the media are going to say, yep, we agree. Everyone in this room is now dumber for having listened to it.